Now, next up, we have another amazing panel. I, I'm looking forward to this one as well. And uh, I think they're going to bring a lot of energy and facts and information. So please prepare yourself, hit the like and subscribe button, share this out. We've got 667 people watching live. Uh, so thanks for being here at the third annual HEX conference, day three. And remember to tune in tomorrow for Richard Hart uh, speaking. It's a hex flex, making money, yeah, we growing by the excess. Yeah, hex, all we know about is excess. Turn up here, I don't rep to an express. Whoa, we're here. What's we're up, live. guys? What's going bang, on? Bang. <laughs> well, how are you guys doing in the chat? I'm going to try to keep up with it, but it's moving pretty quick. So we're going to get a deep dive here. We're going to go pretty technical. Um, if you're an old Hex fan, if you're a new Hex fan, we got something for both parties. So excited to be here. How are you guys all doing? Very excited. Access, I always learn so much from you, man. I got my notepad ready. Take some notes. <laughs> like you, oh, you shared a little bit in, in the uh, in the green room, yeah. some of the charts and stuff we're going to be looking at. So very, very excited to learn. Awesome, chat. Man. Thank you. Thank you for all your contributions to the community as well, sir. Thank you, man. Kareem, I think you're, uh, I think you're muted. Yeah, I was just waiting. So uh, again, oh, I'm excited sorry. to be here. <laughs> as always, <laughs> happy new year to everybody. Happy new year to everybody in the chat. So we want some fire content for you guys today. And yeah, excited to get started. So I think this is my first time community. streaming with X-Ray Vision. I'm pretty, pretty yeah. hyped about that. That's we did see each other too. in person before we ever streamed together. So that was su super cool. Yeah, that, that was awesome seeing you. You guys will actually be able to put in for a bachelor degree certificate in hexonomics after <laughs> Access Alive hits you with all this information. It is insane. So like buckle in, get your notepad ready. It's going to be crazy. Awesome. Well, nice. Maddie, if you'd like to pull up the, the screen share here, we got some data. Thank you to uh, Chris Man who is on uh, quant, uh, not quant game and can't quant gang anymore. What is it now? It's a uh, game theory gang on Tuesday nights, I believe with Maddie. Um, he, he's been putting together a website for some time. He's compiling blockchain data, tracking wallets and tracking the T-share rate and other things. And so he put together a comprehensive report. And so I'm going to be pulling data from that. So I just want to say thank you for that. And, uh, that's the type of stuff that pushes the space forward. So your, uh, your contributions are appreciated. So just a quick look here. I mean, yeah, everyone's down. It's a bear market. Everybody's sad and crying. And uh, well, not all of us are. Some of us are printing huge APYs. But for the guys that don't know, you can actually stake your hex and earn yield. So it hedges against downside price risk. Just so you know. I don't know if you guys knew that. But if you didn't, maybe something to look into. We'll give you a couple compelling reasons as to why you might want to do that throughout the slides. So as you can see, you know, price is down quite a bit. It's down like 90. I think it's almost 98%. Now it's like 96, 97%. But it's still up. 30,000%. So that's a testament to um, kind of like the early genesis of the coin and like what was possible on low liquidity. And it's ironic because nowadays the liquidity is getting so low again that you're actually setting up for a type of trend reversal where it's like a rubber banding effect where the price can do insane things. And we'll look at some price calls later. I know I put a tweet out earlier, kind of people were asking, I kind of made the, the, the mention of like, hey, what do you guys want to listen or what do you guys want to listen to hear about? And one of the main things people want to hear about is price. It's always about price, price, price. Well, we all know that the T-share price always goes up. So that's exciting, right? Um, so just like pulling up the hex chart here, I don't know, Kareem can see this as a technical analyst himself. You can see here on the, I got the two hour chart up on the four hour, it plays out the same. We got like a quadruple bottom here with four fat wicks um, on the price chart, which that is a sign. And this actually just happened recently on gold as well. Like the, you know, like the heavy metal that you, you buy and you put it in a safe. Yeah, that stuff. Yeah, the store of value. Yeah, that stuff did the same thing. And that Hex is now doing as well. So what this tells me is that the dollar is starting to lose dominance again. And we can pull that chart up too, just so you guys will kind of set the trend and show you guys why crypto and Hex specifically is set up to see massive upside in the coming years. So this is the DXY chart. I know Kareem loves to talk about it all the time. Um, you can see that we had this huge massive breakdown off the high and we called for this in private discords, you know, and, and across, across the, basically back since this point here in, in October. And uh, it was interesting because as it was playing out, when we did finally get this pull down, it's like, basically it was like an 8% pull down. And whenever the, the dollar does this, you zoom out a little bit, you'll notice that whenever there's these massive breakdowns, like back here in uh, 2008, 2009, 
it's this extended long sideways period where people leave they do they no longer seek safety in the dollar and they try to exit that to go find return somewhere else so we saw this in the gold chart and we see this happen to be something a potential uh, upside for crypto because as you'll see with this chart here the stable coin index the, the stable coins are basically the way that you get uh, exposure to cryptocurrency and in hex particularly because hex is majority traded like 95 percent of all of the trading occurs on chain on ethereum which means it's the most transparent open and fair crypto trading like out there with with a large history of data and huge returns and the yield so there's a lot of things that plays into why that is like a key component of what true crypto is all about so when you look at something like the market cap dominance chart of the stablecoin index which is a composition of the usd coin the tether and the DAI. It's basically been creating this ascending triangle, um, and it's just sideways up here, meaning that new dollars aren't being turned into stable coins, but new but dollars aren't leaving being like there aren't stable coins being deleted out of the out of the market cap for stable coins either, which tells me that these are stable coins sitting on the sidelines waiting to re-enter. And because there's so many tops on this pattern, it's telling me that there's some sort of a rally in store for us in the short term. Graham, you want to mention, talk so, about that at all? So a couple of things. Uh, again, great analysis. Uh, one of the reasons why fundamentally to start why I love the DXY so well and why it's related to this, it's because it's a multi, multi-trillion dollar with a T market. So it really kind of tells you what big money is doing, where money is basically going. Is money coming into crypto or is money coming out of crypto? So for people who are new, the quick math, which is easy to understand is, once the dollar index fell out of the parabola and the dollar stopped strengthening and start weakening, that actually shows you that it's a point where money is coming back in. In other words, if the dollar is strengthening, people want to take money out because they look at it like, okay, tough times are coming. When the dollar is weakening, that means money now is coming in because weaker dollar investor is going to seek a return. So they're going to take a bet they're going to start moving money back in into riskier assets to get a greater return to compensate for the inflation that they're getting so this is kind of the relationship that you see and if you follow the trend line you will get to understand that everything is connected because weaker dollar makes people want to invest people want to take riskier dollars then they will convert those dollars into stable coins because that's how they're going to enter the new country aka cryptocurrency and the reversal also happens this is the reason why you can literally see the inverse correlation axis, if you can show that, that'd be great, between bull market and basically DXY. In other words, when the DXY is weakening, we're in a bull market. When the DXY is strengthening, we're in a bear market because money is coming out. So for people, for people who understand crypto terms, this is kind of how you see the market maker basically taking the liquidity out. So once you see those inverse relationship, you will get to understand when is also the best time to accumulate, when is the best time to take potential profit, and of course, directly relate to HEX, like I've always said from the beginning, if you just leave off the yield and you never sell the principal, you don't even have to worry about timing the market at all. Because again, it's about time in the market instead of timing the market. But if you must try to time it, at least that kind of gives you an idea of what actually is going on between, again, the DXY, which is a multi, multi-trillion dollar market, because that's what's gonna tell you what's most likely gonna happen because it's correlated to, for those who don't know, DXY is correlated primarily to the Euro, the Japanese yen, the Swiss krona, and then I think also uh, Switzerland as well for a little bit. But primarily it's Euro, pound, and then the um, Swiss krona. Okay, so I got your, I finally freaking got this chart together. But it's important to show this to people so you guys can actually see what we're talking about. So if I if I smoothen out the data and give you like a monthly chart, I got I got Bitcoin in pink and I have uh, the dollar in orange. Exactly. But as you can see effectively mm -hmm. here, what Kareem's trying to represent is that as Bitcoin goes up, the dollar goes down. As the dollar goes up, Bitcoin goes down. Bitcoin goes up, the dollar goes down. As the dollar goes up, Bitcoin goes down. So on and so forth 
you only have this weird sideways pattern right here when Bitcoin, when the Bitcoin um, <laughs> narrative of uh, 2017, 2016, when Bitcoin really started to make its move towards $1,000 for the second time. And people had that aha moment that cryptocurrency was not going to go away and it could not be stopped is when we had that parabolic run up to $20,000. And that's when the dollar really broke down hard against it. This is like a legitimate war, economic warfare going on between the free market, which is true cryptocurrency and Mm -hmm. and um you know nation state currencies and this is all leads into this big political debate of you know where is the store of value in cryptocurrency and i think that's something that we want to kind of bring into uh the frame now is now that we've shown you guys like this this counter correlation yes because it's about understanding the plumbing once you understand the plumbing you get to understand what's actually happening so there's no reason to be in fear or to be in panic you just understand the relationship because everything is in relationship to another thing this is actually why this is happening and you see those big things, especially when you start to realize that when people lose confidence in the dollar, again, money likes to be, uh, I use this good analogy, it's like money is like a jealous girlfriend. It will go away, it's treated best, right? So if investors start to seek for safety, right, they'll take money out. When investors look like, oh, my money is like a melting cube, right, and I'm losing value, I'm willing to take a little bit more risk in order to get that return. So extrapolate to where we are today, which is, really really great i think it's a good point to point that out next week on thursday we're getting the inflation data inflation start to slowly slowly go down which is you know obviously a, a good sign that the dollar might start strengthening and start to weaken like access are showing a chart which then mean in the macro environment that what we talked about this is the time where the xy should be continuing to cool down which then will invite money to come back in because again if the dollar start to weaken, investor will seek more seek a return, which means they will seek a riskier asset and they'll probably convert their money back to stable coin and come back to play the crypto game. So this is why we're very well positioned and this is also why it's a great time to accumulate. Okay, so we're gonna get into some data, but, but before we do that, I think it's important to define, like for those that maybe are new to HEX or like kind of wondering like what sets HEX are apart from every other currency and this is something that gold keys uh, teammate uh and tento nominai talks a lot about which is that hex is really the only cryptocurrency that's competing with bitcoin as a store of value and the way it does it is in the way it is the monetary policy that's set forth so the big question is you know where does value come from in in a in a commodity or in a currency and uh in my opinion and you guys can chime in as well uh i, I believe that stability is is the ultimate goal um for what something that you want uh and when i say stability i don't mean like price flat i mean like predictable growth trend like something that you can predict the inflation rate and the growth over time because it is it, like in the case of hex it's immutable code it's locked in on the ethereum blockchain that'll live there forever and always produce interest at a rate of 3.69 percent per annum against the total supply and then uh, that just ratchets up over time through the compounding effect of this um this asset called the T-share, and that's all tied into this nice package, and it's just launched that way, and it was completed that way, and and that's why hexagons or hex investors are so confident in the long-term outlook for that for this currency. Yeah, just to jump in, I that that fixed inflation rate, or at least max fixed inflation rate, um, I think is one of my favorite things about hex, and also you know something that Dipcatcher was talking about last night. Um, who that inflation goes to and who it's rewarding. Um, with Bitcoin, it's going to miners who are constantly dumping. In Hex, it's going to people who are supporting the price by staking. So I think those are kind of the the two key things that I really love about Hex and kind of the secret sauce uh, in competition with with Bitcoin as a store of value. Got anything to add, Hex Ray? He's muted. I, I was just saying plus one in chat if you think uh you charting is better than Bob Ross painting. I love, <laughs> I love watching you chart, man. Plus one for access. Bro, we let's haven't even go. got to the good stuff yet. Let's, okay, let's go. Let's <laughs> go. All right, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Axis, Thank Axis you has the hot keys, bro. He like he doesn't even like pick the tools, dude. He's got the hot keys down. That's what you know. Oh, actually, I have a background in graphic design, so I think that that lended well to yeah charting. I'm a chartist. So, but yeah, to your point about uh, the supply, look at this, the 10%, only 10% of all hex is staked. Now, why would that be? Why is only 10% of the entire supply? So 
supporting the price. Anybody got any answers to that? Oh, hey. well, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. Some people stake, some people don't, right? Some people see the value of the late gratification. Some people don't. Obviously, there is you know, other factors as well, but ultimately, to keep it simple, is some people see the value in staking and some people see the value in holding liquid. That's the easiest way without speculating too much. But this yeah, is why I mean, the that, system is so yeah. beautiful. Not a choice. I see a comment. I, I think the, the, consist the, the, the consistency, though, the consistency, though, of like 10% has been pretty incredible um just like over the past like you know since big payday it's been very consistent and the the obviously hex staking has grown um and yet that percentage hasn't changed so in my mind i think you know oa plays a big part in that and not staking um majority of their holdings but um yeah what are, what are your thoughts on why it is so consistent um and hasn't really gone up a lot since big payday okay First, I gotta address the OA because I saw someone in here saying it was—it's a scam tactic, no, which no, is no. hilarious to me because it's just a mis—it's a misunderstood feature of the contract. So, the the OA is a benevolent dictator, and he's been sharing nine times the interest with us than they have to. Basically, yeah. he's rewarding good behavior, and he's showing us the right way to delay gratification through his action. If you copy what the OA does, you're killing it in hex. Yeah, and again, the, the cool thing about this, now going to more to the nitty gritty, right, to keep it fun, right, with the quick math, is I look at it like not as a separate entity, but more like as a function, as a system, as a whole. Again, people need to zoom out and see the big picture. For me, it's kind of like imagining the OA is just an arm, which is part of the body, right? It's actually the function that allows you to really truly understand what longer pays better means, because Every time there is an emergency end state, that extra 50% that sits on the buckets that goes into the OA side is actually what grows the OA liquid back more than anything else to forever. So, and it sits there to remind you that if you didn't do what you were supposed to do, that penalty is going to end up rewarding the people who did what they're supposed to do. So not only the buckets over there gets bigger, which makes less people stake, therefore the reward of staking gets greater, but also because those t-shirt gets removed while you're still in there, Therefore, you get to eat the pie from the inside, which then allows your portion of the reward that just got bigger to make you really truly have that compounding effect. So in other words, the mechanism as a whole makes the pie bigger. And as the pie gets bigger as a reward, your portion of the pie also gets bigger. This yes. is where you get that compounding. So again, people don't really see the big picture they look at there's it like also a just a super simple way to prove the the oh the uh that the, it's this economic centralization this control of a large amount of supply isn't just happening in hex it's happening in a lot of cryptocurrency and it's actually worse than a lot of the other cryptocurrencies and actually hexos mm -hmm. made tweets with actual graphics showing you how mm -hmm. centralized cryptocurrency truly is even bitcoin is very very highly centralized as far as economically um in the case of hex mm -hmm. if the way were to stake a large percentage of 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 those coins by the way the oa has never sold and that's actually verifiable on chain that the mm -hmm. oa has never sold so he's got that going for him and on top of that um if he were to stake a large percentage of his coins what that would do would it would decrease everybody's payouts and disincentivize people from staking yeah. so why would he yeah. do that when he is, effectively he'd be shooting himself in the foot and killing his system before you know anyone really kind of gained by this thing gained virality or mass adoption if anything like, yeah the OA is proving that this has longevity and that he does mm -hmm. care about the ecosystem. And he eats inflation. Someone, someone, right earlier, someone earlier presenting um, said that people that are holding liquid don't get diluted. But the truth is, if you're not staking, you are getting diluted by inflation. The, the inflation is going to stakers. So by the OA not staking a majority of their holdings, they're eating that inflation for everyone, uh, which, is, which is bullish for all of us. Um, it allows us to get the APY we can. So, exactly. Another thing, another thing here is just like, okay, so we're just four guys on a panel, but what about this? This is like telling you that the holder, the number of holders has increased this year, last year by 13%, and the amount of stakers increased by 60%, which is showing a strengthening trend and a continued persistence to continue to stake into the future. And so, like, the average stake length has increased, not decreased. 
And the only thing that makes a decrease is whale games, which we'll get into in a little bit. And the reason why, um, we'll find out shortly. But just look at this. In pink, you have holders, and in orange, you have stakers. And just to see that kind of growth in a network that uh, people are have to put something out an average of six and a half years to see a kind of, any kind of a return um, is a testament to that there is a confidence in the network. Yeah, and it's actually a great testament of how resilient the community is and the hard work of people in the community doing the education to help people understand how Hex actually works, what it's designed to do, and how to maximize. So, because again, this wouldn't have happened without people relentlessly continuing to educate and onboard. And that's really what the key that makes this happen. Yep. Um, let's see what else we got. Oh, here's a cool thing. In pink, this pie chart that shows you the sum of Hex by your stake. So you can see that a majority in pink and the 15 year stake and the other purple is the other second majority, five to 10 years. So the, on average, more than 50% are taken for more than an average of 6.5 years. It's pretty That's incredible. crazy. Yeah. So uh, they, it's freaking amazing. I, I still remember the days when it was barely over two. It was like 1.9 and then now two and then now it's like, you know, six and a half years. And, and I've heard somebody say that before, but like people have a relationship with Hex longer than most of what you can see human do nowadays. So it's like, and again, this is true locking, like Richard said. It's not something that you can just kind of lock and then change your mind and this and that. Like, no, this is, it's for real because the truth engine is there to make sure that it's happening. So, and what's amazing about this inflation is the inflation is delayed thanks to those stakers as well, mm -hmm. learning into the future. So, and they get to learn how to delay gratification, how to read the reward that they're going to have long term, and more importantly, get to protect themselves from themselves and from the swings of the markets and the emotions. That's really the key. So maybe we should shift this gear for anybody that's new to like kind of explain where the inflation comes from and how it protects old users and new users alike. So this is called the T-share rate. And in red is the actual historical data of how much it used to cost you in hex to get a T-share. So in the early days of Hex, the contract started and it costed you 10,000 Hex to purchase a T-share. And over time, as large stakes have ended their stakes, you can see that the price of a T-share in Hex has compounded its way up to what is now almost 25 or 26,000 Hex per T-share. So that's a 2.5X on the cost to purchase a T-share, which is effectively a money printer. The T-share is the thing, instead of buying a Bitcoin mining hardware, you're, you're locking your coins up, effectively burning them, and then you are receiving back T-shares as a, as a, like a kind of like a note that gives you access to that yield that is part of the pool. And when you do so, you're locking in your rate. And you're, what you're trying to do is you're trying to beat the long-term rate hikes because in the HEX contract, the T-share the acts like the bond and it always goes up. It's programmed to make sure that when a large staker ends a stake, when anybody ends a stake, that they cannot restake the principal amount of hex plus the interest accrued for the same amount of time to get the same or more yield. So this thing ensures that big accounts that have been in for a year or two can't game the system because it already got 2.5 times more expensive for them to restake for the same amount of time. And when you project this thing out over, over 15 years, the T-share rate if all stakes are ended on time, it's projected to be somewhere north of 130,000 hacks per T-share, which is like a clear 5x away. So part of the reason why hex price can go up is because the original account holders that are earning that yield are continuously going to need to purchase off-market more hex to get the same amount of yield to keep up with the share rate, to get a meaningful amount. But that also leaves opportunity for new guys to come in and still have access to that yield if they want to buy any size bag and put it out into the future. Um, so this is like the regular, in purple here, this is like a regular projection if hex were to be, end, their hex stakes were to be ended on time. So, but the issue that I have with this is that when you apply Metcalf's law, which, which is a science, a computer science um, law, which basically states that when the amount of users in a network doubles, it 10 X's the value of the network. So if we had 50,000 stakers in 2021, and we had 100,000 stakers in 2022, 
that means that we doubled the network and users. And what that means for the price means that the price of the coin, or the price of the network market cap should 10x in theory based on that computer model. It's the same equivalent of like when MySpace came out, it had a growth curve, but when Facebook came out, it demolished MySpace and then its growth curve was exponentially faster due to Metcalf's law of this. It's a similar product, but does it better type of situation. So in the case of Hex, it's a completed product that has the share rate built into it to protect new and old users to make sure that there's always more meat on the bone. And, uh, and because of that, users are coming in at an accelerated rate, which is what this is trying to show us that we went up by 60% staker increase over the last year. So the, the, it's all in the numbers, it's in the math. Um, okay, what am I at? Okay, so that's cool Big and all. Mess. So if we, let, that's just the base model, but what if we keep doubling the network, let's say every three years? Okay, this is called the hopper multiple. So this is like implying that over time you keep doubling the network every few years, well, your T-share rate isn't going to get to 130,000 hacks per T-share by 2038. It's going to get somewhere between 130,000 and 350,000 hacks per T-share, which, which is a multiple on the 5x. It's almost like, what is that, like a 15x from 25,000? And here's so you can see if I combine all models, you can see the regular rate in purple and then the increased rate with, with network adoption in blue. So what we anticipate is that over time, as the price recovers on Hex and people have their aha moment of, oh, Hex isn't going away. We can't stop Hex. It's immutable code. The monetary policy is permanent, unlike the Federal Reserve, who can change their mind on a whim or be bought off or be influenced. A lot of the greatest economic um, saviors of economy, so to speak, one of them was, um, ironically, was Napoleon when he tried to uh, uh, get rid of central bankers and just create, um, he kind of oversaw as a, as a benevolent dictator the, the Swiss franc, and then he created times of prosperity, built roads, you know, built his economy up, great works of art. Because of that benevolent dictator role that he played, you know, eventually he was outcasted and, and died a, a lonely life. But his goodness and, and what he did for that, for that society still lasted m many years into the future. And so here... With the T-share system, you're seeing a similar thing play out where we can't rely on the Federal Reserve not to increase rates. We can't rely on somebody to come save us. And like by holding dollars, you're just you're, you're basically like, you know, you're standing on cracked ground waiting for the it to not fall out from underneath your feet. So you need to find a, a, a flight to safety and where you're going to go to is going to be somewhere that's a store of value that's got something fixed and immutable, something that's permanent that can be here for 100 years into the future that nobody can change. And so there is an element of trust with the OA, but they've proven good behavior. And so with if you can basically accept that fact and accept the Metcalf's law and accept the growth curve of the T-share and understand the long-term goals of the system and how big and vibrant the community is and the fact that there's the price is down 97% and there's still almost $1.3 billion locked up in hacks we're not letting the thing go to zero. Like that's just some ludicrous assumption to be had anyways. And I can prove it. So here we got the hex price chart. I'm gonna go to like a, a weekly so it's more easy to see. Hex, if you use, okay, so there's a tool in charting called the Fibonacci retracement tool. Effectively what you do is you go from a, 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 ma a major local top and then you go down to the major bottom and then you can project out mathematical ratios that are key ratios of life and nature and that they also apply to human psychology because that is also a function of nature itself so when you do that you'll see this pattern in nature all over in plant life and animal life and even in human behavior um, the hex chart as a function of price of price action which is a function of human actions it was able to target and complete the one not the only the 1.618 but it took out the 2.618 and it actually went and tapped the 3.618 um, Fibonacci extension level from its first major high to its first major low. So let's speed up a little bit. Let's go out to the big payday major high, and then we'll go down to like the low. Okay. Well, for the second time, when Hex topped that 56 cents, it actually exceeded 
not only the 1.618, but also the 2.618 Fibonacci extension target level as a function of market psychology. So we can extrapolate that further. We can say, okay, so if we're close to a bottom, meaning the original drop from the, from the launch price to the bottom was about a 99% drop. So we can assume that if that were to occur again, um, we can try to project out where the price can go. If I take my from our high at 56 cents down to the current price, uh, by the way, this is only like a 97% drop, I believe. 96, 96.5%. It would have target price of the next peak bull run at the 1.618 target of $4.15. If you do hit the 2.618 for the third time on it, it, the gain would be insane. It'd be $120 hex on a 671,000% run. Pretty incredible, pretty unbelievable. You know? Do you think? Do you think that it makes sense for since we hit the the two point six on the last run? Um, do you think one point six is more likely? Just with like, is that a trend? Um, yeah, I mean, you could see it's the law of diminishing returns. So if you went to the three point six one eight on the first cycle, the two point six one eight on the second cycle, logic says that well, maybe it's the law of diminishing returns, and you only get to the one point six one eight this time. But that's still a huge gain off the low. It yeah. would be. 23,000%. Now there's a caveat to that because look, we're still in a bear market and we haven't bottomed. So the theory here is that, well, look, we haven't tapped the bottom of this trend line since back in June. It was June 13th. And so if Bitcoin's not done and the Fed's not done and yada, 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 this FIB level could keep going down. But watch what happens to the 1618 the farther you go down. It goes up because it's the rubber banding function of low liquidity of the t-share rate all compounding price higher when it finally does rock it out of here it's like loading the, the jet fuels and, and again the t-share rate continue to what i call t-share acceleration because what people need to understand and let's go back to what you were talking about with the t-share earlier is that that share rate acceleration is only in hex term then you gotta it's a force multiply when you multiply that by the hex dollar price which is going to exponentially make T-share price USD go out of control in terms of getting more and more expensive, which is going to keep more and more people out of the pool, which then allows it to rocket even faster because those who stay in the pool are typically long-term minded. So it's like literally like you're watching the hardening of the system happen. Yes. Getting yes. ready to just fly it out. The hardening, the beach and it's also a function of low liquidity. So every time that the price doesn't get enough of a liquidity injection, so to speak, on these pumps, there's less and less USDC in the pair, which means it takes less and less USDC to get the price back up. You see? So like, you yeah, know, so it's like de-risking. It's uh well, there's just less USDC in the pool, so if you put the same amount back in, it gets the price right back up. Like if there's only like if we had okay, for example, when we were at 20 cents, there was like I want to say somewhere between 20 and 30 million dollars in the pool. But currently, and I, and I think 8 million or 10 million, it was between 8 and 10 million dollars of USDC. But currently, there's only like 1.6 million dollars in there. And I saw it get as low as $900,000 in USDC, which is where we got that triple bottom here. Mm -hmm. And price was able to rocket 51% in eight days because there was a small accumulation, a few hundred grand, few hundred grand, few hundred grand, sideways pattern, and then boom. A million bucks got us up 51%. And so that effect of slingshotting compounds on itself. Eventually, once the sentiment flips and bull market's back on, risk is back on, this thing is going to rocket to higher prices. Because the whole goal here is to not give, if you're a long-term minded, and like obviously whale games and market makers know this, they don't want people to accumulate their token, tons of it at a low price. Like we don't want mm. CZ from Binance coming in and buying a ton of the supply up for months and months and months and months at 0 0.007 sense we don't yeah. want that and it won't and it won't happen because if they put a million dollar order and it's going to shoot the price right back up to like mm -hmm. 1.5 cents so it's just a it's 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 basically sad for those who aren't in is because if you have like 10 or 20 million dollars on the sidelines it's not easy to get <laughs> large portions of the supply and yeah. the higher up this goes the more liquid like hex whales are going to take their liquidity out of the pool to make sure that they're not getting losing it to impermanent loss, which is going to make an even bigger shortage of hex on the market, which is going to rocket price even higher. And then you're going to be heavy in USDC, which is going to give people a lot of time to 
um, sell the price sideways up around the all time high for quite some time. Like if you were to see this pattern play out again, as it did last time off the 99% drop, you know, no financial advice, not saying it will play out like this, but if it were to, um, you know, maybe on a longer time frame like this, you know, price can get right back up to like 20 to 30 cents quite quickly. And then, like I said, that'll be USDC heavy in the pools. And because people aren't, um, hex whales aren't going to want to take the chance of maybe losing a lot of their hex now that it's regained its valuation, people start to realize, oh, shit, this is the move. They're going to be like, okay, so then it's going to go sideways up here above 20 cents for a year and a half. And then our bull market will come 2025, 20, 26. And nothing reinforces that more than Benner cycle theory. So this is a, a theory that basically a guy created in the 1800s, and this has held quite true for some time. And if you see here, the, the, to pointing to the finger on the A here, he says, these are years in which panics have occurred and will occur again. So in 2019, well, what happened in the spring of 2020, three months later? COVID. This, thing, this, is, this model was created in the 1800s, guys. So 2023, what does that mean? Uh, years of hard times, low prices, and a good time to buy risk assets such as stocks, corner lots, goods, etc. Waiting for the boom. Well, guess what? What's point B? 2026, years of good times, high prices, and the time to sell stocks and values of all kinds, which also coincides with the four-year Bitcoin halving cycle, which also coincides with a four-year presidential cycle in the U.S. So a lot of policy changes can occur during that time frame that gives us an opportunity to be huge winners by recognizing this fact. Yeah, and he follows that kind of cool rule of, you know, three years bull, one year bear. And, and what I want people to really understand, too, what Axis just said earlier it's that the way the liquidity works and the same what Wells are doing also, it's actually a, a really cool defense mechanism that's built into the system. So rule number one, you know, quick math is for you to sell something, there needs to be a buyer. People forget that, right? Behind every sale, there is a buy. So the way it works with the system and the way the liquidity actually works is that when you see those big people dumping, you know, 100 million, whatever hex because of liquidity, low they're getting wrecked every time you're trying to push the price down you need exponentially more hex more coin to continue to push the price down so with the liquidity being low it's easy to buy those people out for cheap this is why the price goes you see those wicks it just stays there temporarily but it's just enough to absorb all of these coins out then get I got, moved out of i got more to add with this chart so as we can see in here yeah. like we can slingshot out right so mm -hmm. Why does the, so here's my question. Why does Hex go straight up, straight up, straight up, and then straight down, straight down, straight down? Anybody got an answer for that? Well, I'm, I, well, two, I, two buying, I well, buying, buy and selling? One, then, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, definitely buying and selling. I would say, I would, it's, it's kind of the theory of vector candles. I don't know if people are familiar with that, but basically strong buying happened very, very fast, right? It's kind of like you missed the trade, it just happens and it just sucked out the liquidity. And then what up happening is that they put the liquidity now bigger at a higher price, which then stays stable. And then slowly over time, those people then cash out. And then after that, they remove the liquidity and then they allow the reaccumulation to happen. It's kind of the same process when we were talking about Bitcoin back in the day and explaining what the market makers are basically doing with the, um, the, the Wyckoff distribution pattern, which is they pump it up very, very fast. Then they do the sideways action which allow them to take profit and then they let it drop when they realize that the sales are outweighing the buys and then they restart the process. So I think it's a really simple answer. And that's, I think it's like when, when things are going up, people love it and things start going down, people hate it. And what that's called in, and from what economists define that as is a Veblen good. What is a Veblen good? A Veblen good is a good for which demand increases as the price increases. And this is a function of the yield that the T-share pays out. If somebody's got a money printer and he tells his friend that he's making money with it and then it starts making more money for him and his friend joins and then he starts making money with it and then his friend joins and somebody else starts making money with it and then they're compounding their gains and they're telling their friends and they're telling their friends and they're telling their friends. Eventually, everyone is getting so hyped about it and there's so many people in that the re then there's a big red candle that gets printed and then the, there's a huge group of people that gets put underwater and that starts the topping process. Effectively, mm. it's a, a price and demand issue. It's because it's a function of people not understanding what hex is and mm -hmm. and not treating it with with respect and the value that it actually has in the immutable monetary policy that's built into the code. 
So yes. because people, it's a, it's a, it's actually showing that people don't understand what hex is long term, which is fine because we're actually getting rid of dolphins and people that made yeah. huge returns and they just want out anyway. It's fine, get them out mm -hmm. and let the price. Remember, the farther the price sinks down, the higher the one point six one eight goes. Like if the price gets mm -hmm. down to 007, which is by the way one of the lowest targets that I think is going to be possible in the bear market, then you got you at a seven dollar hex, which would coincide with the the seven cents top before the pulse chain run up the past so it's just a function of 100x high so Axis, i've got a, i've got a question for you real quick so we we kind of took the elevator up and the stairs down and i feel like we built a lot of um oh you go back to the chart real quick yep. um i feel like we we built a lot of support in areas that we didn't have before um do you feel like on the way back up that there's going to be resistance at those levels or uh, do you think we're yeah. just going to break through those There'll be resistance for sure. But remember, it's a function of liquidity and sentiment. And so yes. like when you think about how many wallets actually have economic energy and hex, there's less than 2000 that have enough to like keep price down um, at, at these prices. I would say it's even less. But when you get to around mm -hmm. 10 cents to 20 cents in that range, there's still some people that could exit. And we could take our time getting out. I'm not saying that it's a straight up path, but I'm saying that it it could be if a coordinated effort, you know, the on chain, I can't say specifically because I don't want to give out too much, but there is a lot of USDC and, and uh, die sitting on the sidelines. Um, so yeah, you get like, a, you're talking about like a more longer structured out like this or um, like a straight shot up and then the sideways consolidation near the, near the high above 20 cents, basically. So then mm -hmm. you, cause like we're, we created structure here on the way up. We could create structure on the way down. Um, like this. Yes. And don't like underestimate people two opportunities. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because a lot of those people either restake and the new people that bought also the bottom stake for the long term. Because again, when you, it's not every day you get a chance to buy something 90 plus than down. Yes. So what makes Hex brilliant is the staking ability as well. So staking ability means coins out of circulation, not coming down anytime soon. And as the price start to go back up, those people see their wealth building. Therefore, like Axis was saying earlier, the behavior gets reinforced because they're like, oh, look, I bought this at the low, I staked it, price is double or triple or whatever it might be. My wealth just tripled, my interest rate just went up because now I'm yielding at a higher clip, dollar value. Therefore, I am literally incentivized to continue that behavior. So, and again, if people just take what they need, restake the rest, it allows the price chart to go up at a sustainable pace. And that's what you were able to see in early 2021 it's just towards the end it got out of hand and started to accelerate very fast and that became unsustainable and that was the beginning of the top so, but if we just go kind of up into the right sideways kind of like an amazon chart yeah. at a sustainable growth not too crazy not too low that can be sustained yeah. we and we have time because guys like, it's not in, it's not just going to bottom and go straight back up i mean i'm saying that it had done that in the past when we dropped 99 percent in the beginning when it was new and so like if you got a similar thing you still got to get above this level still got to and if the best tail would be consolidation here for some time and then a break into this band you see how like these are like bands this is band one band two band three and then like band four and so each one of these is different consolidation levels that i would look for going forward and yeah you could see resistance you know and go sideways and I actually posted a chart recently, um, actually it was today, that if you lay overlay the, um, let's see here, I'm going to find it. If you overlay the 2019 Bitcoin fractal on, on the hex chart, it actually would show you quite a crazy potential outcome. And I actually got called uh, insane for that this was an imaginary chart. But just think about it with me for a second. So you got hex in pink, and you got 2019 Bitcoin bear market in orange. Well, Bitcoin got into a channel and couldn't get out. For many many months and then it did a triple bottom and actually hex launched right here on this chart literally hex launched right here when bitcoin was here so it'd be funny if it bottomed here and it started to make its way higher there toward 10 11 cents and let's say that may comes around i don't know what's going to happen maybe a documentary launches maybe a pulse chain something happens with that then you could get some sort of anomaly event where that launch happens and then people do the switcheroo on their assets and maybe you know you get some sort of a sell-off not saying it's going to go this low but that you'd see like a pump into the uh, a fundamental news event and then the sell the news event and then a recovery quickly on basically whales are just taking advantage of an opportunity that that dumb money gives them 
and then just a short, slow recovery into 2025, you know, then you trade between, that means we don't even get above 20 cents all the way out until like mid 2025, which makes perfect sense. That is a really volatile version of what Kareem's saying as a slow chug. This is just a way more money-making opportunity for both whales and small guys alike. So you never want to throw all your powder in at once and you never want to be all in on something unless you really believe in it. And you'd like, I would say never be all in on something unless you're Maddie all in because he believes hardcore in Hex. And I'm with you, buddy. I'm heavily in Hex. I'm not afraid to admit it. I was a big yeah, we... one in Ethereum miner and I gave that shit up so I could get passive income. I see the future we... in Hex and I see it's the not... future in these, in these ecosystems. Good job, by the way. And another thing too, why it's going to be volatile, people keep forgetting, you're going to get a copy. I know there's going to be some people trying to be smart and, oh, this side is going to be better than that side and play that game. That's going to add to the volatility. But again, the, the wise people, not the smart one, the wise one, I want to realize I'm just collecting money printer here. Left or right, I'm getting paid. And friendly reminder, once again, quick math, the yield is not in the chart. I repeat, the yield is not in the chart. Those who understand the value of staking, those who understand the value of something I said day one about building a dream account, that's the thing that's going to save you, literally. By 2035, if you make it that far or long term enough, when you look back and you realize and you see what that thing has become, you're going to be very, very grateful because that is not on the chart. You know what I mean? So this is why I want to just remind everybody volatility is going to be crazy. But again, when Pulse Chain comes out and you get a doubling of your bag, whatever you see on the chart, basically just double. It's a stock. And on top of that, now you're yielding. Exactly. Yeah. So I can actually prove it. Like Tesla. Yeah, what's Tesla? TSLA? Yeah. Yeah. And it did a. Yeah. So, so this, was a, this was a stock split that happened on Tesla. Mm -hmm. uh, te they announced a stock split. You start to see an accumulation period inside of this triangle. And then the price runs up 50% off the low 52 percent and smart money gets one two three chances to exit on a high after the stock split right so it's a like pulse chain launch news fork whatever is going to create a run-up on hex in the same way that the tesla stock, stock split occurred it's just a function of market psychology yes Chart and also how liquidity is built up because right. those who want to make sure they ensure they copy and they're doubling are going to start removing their liquidity because they want to make sure they keep their pressure hex so that that thing double by removing their liquidity liquidity gets very small which then means any wells can come in million dollars you can easily you know double the price another thing we need to understand about the liquidity is like i like was saying earlier Somebody can dump 80 million hex and then, you know, the price barely goes to, you know, what is it? 1.8, cents, which by the way, it's, it's still amazing because there's, there's coins out there. You dump just 50,000, that thing goes to zero. I mean, hex been withstanding yeah, way like more it, selling hex pressure. can take hundreds of millions of hex sell off and it only moves the price a few, like 10, 20, 30%. And then yeah, there's always, that's... there's buy orders in there because the bid, to, the bid, the sell ratio is three to one, four to one, five to one some days. There's usually like five, there's, I've been seeing days where there's 530 buys to like 220 sells and the 220 swells slightly outweigh. So it pushes the price chart slightly down, but it's not, it's the, no one has enough economic energy. No, I should say no bad actors yep. seem to have enough economic energy anymore to really push the beach ball underwater and keep it there anymore. And so this and, chart- And here, I feel like, and I feel like they've sold off like, I'm I'm so grateful that so many people are getting out like these whales because they can't they can't stop the run like they can't sell into the next run they're gonna have to buy to sell right like absolutely so I feel yeah I feel like we've we've really cleared out a lot of a lot of people that um, that would have sold into that and so I feel like it's rocket fuel for the next run yeah absolutely and to put into perspective if those people were to buy back that same eighty to hundred million hex the price would probably go to like eight cents that that's what I want people to understand. It's like, it's absorbing a lot. The bids are strong on the support, but on the ask on the upside, if you were to be a new person, you want to accumulate 100 million hex, there's no way you push the price at least 150% just to get the same amount. That's why it's so well designed. It absorbs the shock, like I said earlier, behind any sale, there's a buyer, somebody is capturing that liquidity mm -hmm. and then removing it, not leaving it on there. So what we can so talk about that in a second. Buyer, let's say, 
we got like nine yeah. we got like nine minutes left so i just want to quickly go through this chart here which is basically right. if, if if hex is competing with bitcoin for the store of value of cryptocurrency we want to like look a little bit farther into that so this chart here shows you basically the bitcoin fractal after its first cycle projected out over time and i would say that this is maybe a little quick but uh imagine it going out a little bit slower and maybe topping a little bit less high maybe not but this particular fractal as hex getting up to that dollar to remember we said four dollar target easily in the next bull run and this is actually projecting it there sometime in 2025 so and as you can see like bitcoin's obviously going to continue its growth curve as well so it's just something to keep in mind about the growth of, of it and so if bitcoin if hex is going to compete with bitcoin for store value how can we prove that well we have to look at the way Ethereum, because Hex is built on Ethereum, so we have to look at the way Ethereum treated Bitcoin. So if Ethereum, here I got Ethereum versus Bitcoin. This is a cross analysis of two price charts. So what it is, is it's Ethereum price over Bitcoin price, showing you the ratio of how valued ETH is compared to Bitcoin. So if the price rate's going up, it means ETH is gaining value against Bitcoin. If the price rate's going down, it means Bitcoin is gaining value against Ethereum. And if you remember back to 2018, the narrative was bit bear market, Bitcoin is the real cryptocurrency, everything else is a shit coin. And so what happened was everybody exited everything. All of the ERC twenties were trash, none of them had real value. Then the the real bottom happened in September of nineteen. And I believe that was roughly around like eighty to hundred and twenty dollars per Ethereum. And good things started to happen for Ethereum. So scoot ahead a couple months, there was a little rally in the markets off the low. And then in December, Hex gets launched right here. And that is the first interesting thing about this chart is that when Hex launched, ETH started to gain dominance against Bitcoin. Scoot ahead a little further into 2020. Well, what happened in the spring summer of 2020? Uniswap came out. That was another huge utility being built on top of this, of this ecosystem on Ethereum, giving ETH more value and more usability, more utility, faster transactions, yada, yada, yada. So ETH mm -hmm. continued to grow with the new functionalities being built on it. DeFi and also, summer. DeFi summer, baby. And, it, and then, you know, Hex helped make that popular. You know, Hex really is true DeFi. It was like the first of its kind in a lot of ways. Made Uniswap popular, made on-chain trading popular, still remains that to this day. No exchange has really traded in any kind of meaningful volume. And over this period you're of time... You're welcome, three, Vitalik. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the gas load increase. We'll make our own chain. But uh, so it did an increase of 440% against Bitcoin. So... If, if, if Bitcoin is a store of value and Ethereum as the gas and oil of cryptocurrency went up 440% against Bitcoin, still never recovered its all-time high. So you can never get all your Bitcoins back in ETH. But you could have leveraged Ethereum to maybe buy Hex and then get all your Bitcoins back in many fold over, for example. Well, so ETH went up 440% against Bitcoin. Well, what does it look like when we compare it with Hex? I'm actually going to do this away to, to really drive this point home. I got five minutes left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the screen in half. And I'm going to show you on top ETH Bitcoin, just like the chart you just saw. And on the bottom, we'll show uh, Hex versus ETH. Um, use the line chart. Okay. Okay. Candle chart. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Okay. So you guys, if you if you um, can recognize patterns, you can see here that in the same way that ETH bottomed against Bitcoin in the beginning and made a first high, it then created a bear market into a first low, then created a second high, then created its second low. In the same way that Hex has now made a first high off its low into a second or first low into a second high into its what's coming into its final hurrah before people start to realize the value of the t-share the value of the immutable code and the policy and that price is not where you derive value but monetary policy is where you derive value and this would have hex gaining upwards of 600 percent against eth it may never recover its all-time high against eth but what does it matter when you're doing multiples over eth what does it matter? Especially when you factor in that's just price appreciation. That's not even accounting for any staking laddering you do. 
Exactly. So and again, I rest my case. Very well. And again, bullish. this is an term. Very bullish because now if if just do a 2x, that means that 600 percent, right? Well, 600x also doubles because again, this is ratio. So because what I remember happening too during the time is not only hex was gaining against ETH, but ETH was also going up in price. You know, when it's when that crazy run from eighty dollars to five thousand. So with that similarity happening again. It's a perfect positioning, not only for accumulation, but for understanding the trend of what's going to happen as the money start to come back in. Fast forward in 2023, as inflation start to taper in, as DXY start to go down, and as money start to go back in, like I said earlier, money goes where it's the best treated. And those ratio charts shows you where the money is the most treated. People usually enter crypto how? Ethereum, Bitcoin, or stable coins, right? So, and then they figure out where they want to leave the money so if they find out what is happening they finally learn about the t-shirt and about hex and about all the great things that we got going on including pulse chain you can definitely see that similarity action goes again and this year i truly believe is our year of virality as well so when you combine yeah. all those things together you get to see what we're perfectly designed to have a successful year and probably next two three years as well all right my brother Hex, nice Ray, please give us give us the final send out dude, please dude, dude I, know, I know when to just shut up and let it roll you guys are on fire i'm watching like this is like being in disneyland when the fireworks are just going crazy at the end of the day <laughs> i'm just enjoying i'm so happy that's why i jumped in chat i was just like let me just chat away and let you guys roll you guys are doing awesome uh i would i would give a shout out to this kind of timing along with furu finance talking about going viral with the short clips like if we push both those things at the same time and people get to see some of this alpha and some of this some of the timing that we're actually in even though we're in a bear market then we're going to punch that bear right in the throat we don't <laughs> hex doesn't have to be pre-viral guys we have people that geniuses in this community building amazing products like gold key and alex and then we got people who really understand this deep, deep rain man math, like Alex, uh, uh, Axis Alive. We got Kareem over here. That's the best salesman in the world. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing right now in the bear market, folks? This is crazy. Living it up. Man. Absolutely. I've man. had some, I've met a whole new family out there. I appreciate all of you in the chat. Maddie, thank you for letting us come on here. You have, you and have if, me until, if anyone, until, uh, if anyone listening right now, if yeah. anyone listening right now hasn't been to an in-person hex event, um, hundred percent recommend it. I've met all these guys, um, in Vegas, I think two times now, and it's, it, it takes hex to another level when you get to meet people in person. Um, this community is absolutely amazing. And the, the, the people that support this is why I'm, I'm most bullish on hex. So I'm honored to be up here with you guys. I, I always learn so much from you guys. Um, and yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I learned so much today. Nice. My closing message always, we stake, we day and we chill so i have a cool announcement coming up in the next month or so dream account just hit a record so i'll be lucky to share that with everybody but again we, we stay the course it's diamond hands away so we're good thanks guys appreciate you thank you guys and, and thanks maddie man maddie you look great thanks <laughs> what do you guys i mean this whole conference is going so well and uh i'm, I'm just so happy we have record uh viewership right now and you got you guys oh. did an awesome job nice shout out to chat thank you thank you for, thank you for being here we appreciate you everybody so appreciate being here diamond hands awesome. all the way well thanks again guys and we'll catch you next time thanks maddie See you.